So lately the debate has been raging on if PvP is in a good state, or if it's just doomed, if it's not nearly as good as it used to be. And I've made a couple of videos on this, one of which Agamatsu reacted to not that many days ago. This was called uh, the PvP is doomed or PvP is unplayable ramble. And you know, we agreed on certain points, we disagreed on some others. But I would like to pose a new question. I would like to challenge the status quo. At multiple points in during his reaction, he came back to this idea, to this point, that the average Deep Woken player now is significantly better than the average Deep Woken player, you know, 12 months ago. Which is somewhat true. Of course, that's the natural progression of the game. The longer it's been out, the longer people have played it, the better they will become. But I would like to challenge that. I would like to say that it's not that the average Deepwoken player or the average Godseeker has gotten so much better at the game in the last couple months since Verse 2 released. I would rather say that Deepwoken as a game has gotten significantly easier to play. It's not that these players, have, like their skill level is just skyrocketed, that they're just insanely good and they're spending all day, every day, like grinding. But that the game's just easier. It's easier to be good at the game. And let me explain why I think that. So lately I've been watching a lot of these, like, quote-unquote high-level chime videos. I've been watching, like, Sheep, Nogo, Inu, a lot of players that either are, like, top 50 or God Seekers formally. Uh, a lot of, like, other smaller YouTubers. I apologize for not, like, having their names on hand. And I noticed a couple things about the combat. First of all, no one is M1 fainting. I mean, M1 fainting used to be a massive part of the game. That was a massive determinant on how skillful you were because that was what you were using for mix-ups. That's how you were getting past people's, like, block and their parry. You had to use your faint and trick people. No, no one M1 faints. You just mindlessly swing through fucking everything. And I've noticed that while monster fainting does exist somewhat, it's not for actual mix-ups. It's more so with things like Flame Leap to get mobility or to get speed so that you can then just catch someone off guard. Like you can just hit them with a knockdown or a stun. You know, the and I'm, another thing, another thing is roll canceling. I mean, roll canceling used to be the shit. That was like you would roll out of combos more than you'd parry them sometimes. You don't even really see roll cancels now, dude. You just zone people with your mantras and then try to get them with a lucky M1 or like a stun, something like uh, Whirl Throw or like Sightless Beam or Sinister's Halo, and then you go from there. I mean, the core mechanics of the game, fainting, like fainting is one of the absolute most important mechanics of Deep Oak and PvP. But what, like if you could faint correctly, mantra faint or M1 faint, that determined if you were a good player or not. And that's a mechanic that is, like, completely null and void now. You don't even have to be good at it. You don't even have to. You can just swing through at everything. And that's where I'm making this point that it's not that players are so much better, but it's that the game is just so much easier to play. In the past, fainting used to be significantly faster, and that's why it was so important. If you caught someone off guard, like if you fainted and they missed the parry, because you swung so much faster after, uh, like, a feint, it was almost a guaranteed hit. Because you would swing before they had the chance to roll, you know? If you miss your parry, you get punished. Skillful PvP. Now it takes so long to swing again after feinting that they have the time to either roll or to straight up just hold block. And now that moves in to another point, which is actual posture itself. There's a lot of builds especially at the upper levels I've noticed, that focus so much more on posture than they do health, honestly. I mean, you see these builds that, like, you fucking have an orbital strike, like a nuclear barrage on their character, and then they just hold block. And if their posture gets too high, they go, they walk up, throw an M1, it gets parried, obviously. Like, they're not even trying to hit them. Their opponent throws out an M1. They parry, immediately spit, because they're in close range. Their posture goes back to zero, repeat. That's not skillful. That's such a scummy, like, why is such a scummy playstyle rewarded nowadays? Like, the core mechanics of what determined whether you were good or not 
are no longer the most important thing in the game. The most important thing in the game, right beside parrying, which of course obviously still matters. There's a lot of copers that think you don't need to parry anymore. I mean, fuck, come on. But probably the most important thing about your like gameplay now, about how you're good, how good you are, is your actual build. Your build currently is the greatest determinant of how quote unquote good you'll be at the game, which just ties into my first point. The game is so much easier to play. You can make such crazy builds that you don't have to be that good at the game. Like the build does it for you. You don't have to really be that great at parrying or dodge timing if you have zoning as part of your build. Like nobody can walk up to you if you're in the middle of an ice fissure, which actually got nerfed. Thank fucking God. But like, or uh, ice hero sword. Like if you have such powerful zoning and those are only two examples, you don't even have to really be that great at parrying because nobody can walk up to you. Builds are absolutely out of control now. And Agamatsu had said in this video that the aver like the best of the best, the best verse one build would completely wash a verse two build. And I think that is cap. Agamatsu, you are smoking for thinking that. And the reason why I say that is absolutely simple. That even the best verse one build ever created you get a rare or a legendary every single talent hand you are still bound by the constraints of your stats you only have 315 or so stat points to go around and 100 of those at minimum are gonna go in 150 really are gonna go into your weapon or your uh, like magic and if you're no attunement 100 guaranteed into your weapon Okay, you can only get so many cards. You know, if you're doing like the OG, like best no attunement build from verse one, they're like 90 strength, 90 fortitude, you know, 25 agility, uh, 20 willpower. You can get a lot of cards, but you can only get the strength legendaries and rares. You can only get the fortitude legendaries and rares. That's it. Now with verse two with Shrine of Order, you can get those uh, strength legendaries. You can get those fortitude legendaries. But you can also get willpower. And you can also get tap dancer. And you can also get this and that and that. Like, you can get so many different things now. Even the, like, like I'm saying, the perfect god roll build where you got literally everything would lose to like a decent verse 2 build because the verse 2 build just has more. Like, what is the God No Life King build back in the day going to do against the Silent Heart that got, you know, uh, Dead Gods for free? Nobody had Dead Gods back then. That's part of why they made the Ring of Pestilence. That's why No Life King was so strong. Nobody had an anti-heal. Well, now every other Shrine of Order build has Dead Gods, you know? the Like, I don't understand the idea where, you know, oh, like, builds are strong, but they're not nearly as strong as they used to be. Yes, they are. Builds are insane now. This is Deep Broken Battlegrounds. If you want it, you can have it. Like, you can have this insane combination of shit. And you would expect the builds to then do less damage. But go look at some of Sheep's, like, build showcases. Go look at some of Inu's. Go look at, like, Nogos. Go look at all these top players. You'd expect them to have, like, 100 weapon or whatever, the damage they do. They have, like, 70. Or, like, or they have, like, 50 in one magic, 30 in another, 30 in another. And they still pump out tons of damage because of damage multipliers which you can get more of than you could in verse one because with shrine of order you have access to different stat trees which means more damage multipliers you see what i mean it's not that people are that much better at the game it's just that it's that much easier to play you know the bar of entry to be a quote-unquote good player is lower than ever because you don't have to think when the build does so much for you just look at the gameplay. Listen to what I'm saying. If you take anything out of this whole ramble, think about all the times you see a high-level player like M1 fainting. Think of all the times you see them mantra fainting, which are supposed to be two of the three core mechanics in PvP that determine who is the worst and who is the best. Think about all of the times that you actually see them using those mechanics that are supposed to make the difference, and then tell me if it's a difference of skill or if it's an objective difference in gameplay. I'm just saying. Also, editor's note, 
pretty recently they made this change where like if you have uh 80 strength or 90 strength you then take your mantras to level five and then shrine of order and lose that strength your mantras don't stay level five they then go back down to like level four or level three like whatever your strength now is why why the fuck though can you then have like 90 fortitude put on the best shield in the game drop down to like 60 and you're still allowed to use that shield why are you allowed to use mantras that you would never be able to have pre like there's there's so many inconsistencies with the shrines it's 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 hard to even wrap your mind around like what why nerf certain things and then allow others it's so all over the place man